Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we go about capturing flag number two for the capture the flag exercise forensics. So the first thing I want to do, and you should probably do this as well, is ensure that you still have network connectivity with the target. So I'm going to go ahead and ping the IP address for my target. I'll hit enter, and I see that I'm getting a positive return. To break the sequence, I'm just going to press Control C. So the next thing we want to do now is do another DIRT search, and we're going to be looking for text files. Now to do this, we're going to use DIRT, and I'm going to give it a space, a dash capital X, and the X stands for extension. And the extension type that we want to look for is text. So I followed that up with a space, period, TXT. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and the DIRT search comes back very quickly, finding me a tips.txt file. Looks like a robot.docs text file is at the root of this web server. So we're just going to go ahead and open up a browser, and we're going to visit tips.txt. To do this, I'm just going to go up here to my application launch, open up the web browser. And so when my web browser does open up, I'm going to go to the target using the IP address. Now I'm going to append to the front of my address a forward slash, and then I'm going to type in tips.txt. Now up here inside of the tips.txt file, we have two links. One is for the flag.zip, and the other one is for a directory called igolder. So what we're going to do now is we're going to visit the flag.zip and see if we can open it up. So again, I'm going to go up here to my address bar, and now I'm going to back off the tips.txt. And what I want to put in here is the forward slash flag.zip. Now once you have that inside the address bar, just go ahead and hit enter. Now when you attempt to open up this archive, it's going to give you the option to save it. You go ahead and save it, and it's going to save it over to your downloads directory. Now once you have the file downloaded, you're just going to go inside of the directory, and you're just going to right-click on it, and you're going to select Extract here. When you attempt to extract it, it's going to want a password. So we now have to go find the hint that's going to tell us how to find the password. Let's go ahead and cancel that out. Go ahead and close out the download directory. And now we're going to go visit this directory that's still up on side of our target called iGolder. So I'm going to back that off where it says flag.zip, and we're going to go into the iGolder directory. Now up inside of this iGolder directory, you'll see that we have a clue.txt file. We want to go ahead and open that up, and we can do that just by double-clicking it. Now inside of here, we see that we have some PGP encryption. The upper one, the first one, well, that's the PGP key. And the second one is the PGP message. We need the key so that we can decipher the message. So for us to be able to decipher this PGP encryption, we're going to have to go to the iGolder site and use their interface or their tools to give us in English what this message is. Now to do that, I'm just going to go up here to Player. I'm going to go to Manage, Virtual Machine Settings, and again, I'm going to go to my network adapter, and I'm going to change over to NAT for my network type. I'm going to say OK to that. Give it just a second so it can relearn the network. And so once we get out to the Internet, let's just open up a search engine. In the search bar, let's just type in decrypt PGP, and the first link is for PGP decryption tool iGolder. Let's just go ahead and launch that website. So in this first box, you're going to put the encryption key. And in the second box, you're going to place the encrypted message. Once you have both those inside their assigned boxes, you can then decrypt the message, and you can read what it says. In case the forensic investigator forgets his password, this hint can help him, where the password is of six characters long. Starting three characters is the word for and the ending three characters are numeric. 
So now that we have our password hint, we can open up a new terminal. And at the terminal, we're going to need to change locations over to our downloads directory where our zip file is currently located. So at the prompt, I just typed in CD space downloads. Hit enter. Now I'm inside of the downloads directory. Now the tool that we're going to use to help us create this dictionary file that we need to be able to crack that password is called crunch. And I've typed in the word crunch followed by six space six, which means a minimum length of six and a maximum length of six because that was part of the information we received from the password hint. I then give it a space, a dash T, which means I want you to print all this information into a text file and I want you to use the following format. So the format is going to be the first three letters of the password that we know, which is FOR4, and then the three remaining numerical characters that we don't know, and we're going to indicate that in our command syntax using percent 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 give it a space a dash o the dash o is output and we want this information output it to a file called dict dot text and that's going to be saved over to our downloads location once we have that information typed in correctly just hit enter and crunch will now generate the following number of lines which is 1000 now that we have our dictionary or our word list, we have to have a utility that can crack a password for a zip file. The utility that we're going to use to crack the password for the zip file that we downloaded is called fcrackzip. The fcrackzip utility may not come with your download or your installation of Kali Linux. If that's the case, you will first have to update and input the correct repository for the download location for fcrackzip. Now I put the link for the website where you can get the information on how to update your source list, but this is the source that you have to have to download fcrackzip. Once you have your source list updated, you can then perform an app get update and then perform an app dash get upgrade and then you'll be able to download fcrackzip utility. I know it's going around the mountain a long way, but that's just the way it is with open source. So at my prompt, I've typed in fcrack space dash lowercase h so I can look at the help menu. Now we're going to be using a couple of different command options. The first one is going to be the dash u. It tells us to use unzip to weed out the wrong password. We've got that. Then we've got this capital D for dictionary. We're telling it to use a dictionary. The last thing we're going to be using is the dash lowercase p, which is use string as initial password file. And then we're going to point it over to the zip file that we want to crack the password for. So let's take a look at how all of this is going to play out. I'm going to go up here in my file system. We're now going to go over to the downloads directory, and you'll see that I have that dict.txt file, and I have the flag.zip. I'm going to close that out, and I'm currently in that directory called downloads. So I'm telling fcrackzip where this particular zip file is and how to find the dictionary file that we created earlier. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And it said the password was found, and the password is 4007. Now to extract the zip file using our command line, all I have to do is type in unzip space flag.zip. Go ahead and hit enter. Now I type in the password that we discovered. Hit enter. And we're shown that we have a PDF called flag.pdf, and we have a DMP file called L-S-A-S-S. -S -S. Now that the contents of our zip file has been extracted, we can go into the file system. We can go into downloads and we can now open up that PDF or the flag.pdf file to see our second flag. And there it is. And so in this short video presentation, you got to see how we go about capturing the second flag for the capture the flag exercise forensics. And in our next video, we're going to go after flag number three. 
So I'll see you then.